Recovering from the COVID-19 economic meltdown to the struggle with high price of aviation fuel due to the Ukrainian war, the International Air Transport Association has expressed hope for the recovery of the aviation sector despite ongoing global economic headwinds. IATA in its latest report disclosed that airlines have continued to demonstrate resilience and adaptability in the challenging post-pandemic environment as passengers' traffic gained momentum globally and recovery from 41.7% of 2019 revenue passengers kilometer in 2021 to 68.5% in 2022. The report also shows that air cargo demand in 2022 dropped to 8% lower than 2021, indicating that air cargo industry will face more macroeconomic headwinds in 2023. To give more insights into this development and other contending issues, in the global and local aviation industry. I'm being joined live in our Lagos studio by the managing partner, Aglo Aviation Support Services Limited, Mr. Tayo Ojuri. Good afternoon. It's good to have you in the studio. Good afternoon. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, when I read this report from IATA saying that recovery seems to be on track, I got excited. But really, what is happening that we are getting this increased traffic and all of that? There's reason for excitement, and let's put things in perspective. Okay. We're looking at January to December 2022. And January to 20, uh, December 2022, we looked at a growth, an increase of 68, 64.4% yeah. traffic. And even for res we, we actually uh, evaluate our traffic numbers by revenue per passenger and kilometers. So we looked at a lot of passengers passed through and flew in 2022, from January to December. And we're now comparing that vis-a-vis -vis, um, 2021. And that was low. So what really, what really calls for this fun fair at this point is the numbers are looking really good when compared to pre-2019. So that's where the excitement, and that's why we're here at this table this afternoon to talk about why the numbers, why, why, it's in, why, it's, why is it news after all? It's mm -hmm. just numbers. Yeah. But we've seen that pre-2019, we had growth, and it was actually forecast to grow further than that. But we had the break slam of COVID. Yeah. And with COVID, we had lots of restrictions, and we had the zero COVID uh, policy by China. We had the global uh, global global supply chain issues. We had um, the Russia-Ukraine uh, Russia war that all actually affected global aviation traffic. Mm -hmm. So with that, put with all those in the mix, we now saw that a January, it's a December 2023 with those numbers and putting later, laying those numbers to pre-2019 numbers, it's looking with a 68.5% growth. So we see that that's, it calls for clinking of glasses mm -hmm. and it calls for lots of uh, good news. And we actually see that it, it tallies with what the projection of IAT had said way back in June of 2022, I believe it was, where they're saying about 4.7 billion people were actually traveling in 2023. So we're on, uh, we're, on, we're, on, uh, we're on schedule, but it's um, like they say, life happens in January. We saw infla inflation yeah. rise globally. And we've seen lots of countries across the world, even the IMF, uh, uh, had, and everybody had to revise and rejig the global, and IATA, the Boeing and the um, Airbus had to rejig the numbers of what is the expectation for 2033 in light of the num inflation. But we're now seeing that with inflation, most of the OECD countries have actually increased their interest rates. We've seen a lot of that interest rate has actually affected a lot of traveling. Aviation is a function of disposable income. When you don't have enough money on your interest rates on your credit cards or the cost of borrowing is higher, you don't have that disposable income to travel for vacation or even as for manufacturing, like you actually said in your previous report, yeah. you see the manufacturers are not, are not optimistic about the production rates. So all this affects the number of people that are going to travel. Yeah. And we're seeing that, uh, when we, uh, we're looking towards seeing that at the end of this first quarter, uh, with the inflation rate high we, in, in Nigeria, if we bring that home, 
We're looking at inflation rate in January that went to 21.8. Uh, that's really high. But we are in a peculiar environment in Nigeria. We're having elections in yeah. full, full swing. So with few days. And it's been in full swing <laughs> in the last uh, January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so in the last like six weeks. So lots of travel, lots yeah, of correct. movement, Yo, intermodal means of transportation that's from true. across Nigeria. That's so that's going to pick up. It's not going to be a good, vivid reflection of yeah. what the numbers yeah, because are. Immediately after, yes. it could come back to. Well, and with that, we've seen lots of movement. But we're still grappling with the challenges of Forex. Because uh, I wanted to say, with all of this. Beautiful figures. Does it look like you push putting behind us all of the challenges that we used to have before now? And one that comes to my mind also is the restriction in China. How did that affect the global space before now? Let's put something in perspective. Yeah. What is the ratio of the travel po traveling public across the world? Yeah. It actually puts a picture, paints a picture of what we're talking about. So the numbers are is. Across the world, yeah. Europe accounts for 30.4% of the traveling, uh, traveling public. North America is 28.8%. Uh, Asia Pacific, which uh, China falls in, is 22.4%. And that's what we saw between, 2000 and, between January to December 20, uh, 2022. Middle East, 9.8%. It would have increased because of the World Cup numbers. And, and then Latin America, 6.4%. At the bottom of that rank is Africa. At two point one percent, so with China, with the closure of China and the night twenty two point four percent traffic restrictions, you find that that really affected uh, uh, the movement and the numbers of passengers. But now, it also affected the global supply chain movement. But now the zero COVID policy has been re uh, reviewed. It's opened up after the uh, recently. Uh, concluded Chinese lunar uh, celebrations. Yeah, yeah. So with that now, we're seeing opening up. We're seeing things going to pick up. And from a recently visited uh, uh, so, uh, conference, they were looking at uh, the, the, the estimations and forecasts. They're looking at second, uh, second half of 2023. There's going to be a very good optimism of huge traffic numbers for not only passengers, but cargo as well. Let's talk cargo. How well are we doing around, around that space? Because I see a lot of reports around that in, in recent times. What's us? What's what level are we, have we gotten to in country? Let's start from. We cannot talk of cargo in country without okay. talking about the global perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Because okay. we're an importing nation. That's true. And even apart from us being an importing nation, cargo it's what you call bidirectional. You have what the, the global manufacturing world yeah. now, you have lots of so, uh, machines being uh, the, the labor in the East or the Asia is cheap. So you have all the manufacturing there, and then you have all the phones, the iPhones, the mm -hmm. Samsungs, the new phones are actually produced in Asia. Then they, they go through Anchorage and go in, as well to Europe. And then from Europe, it comes here, or from China, it comes here. So when we've, what we've seen with the numbers in the last 24, 18 to 24 months mm -hmm. is that, yes, it peaked with COVID because nothing moved. Passengers, they didn't move, but traffic of cargo moved. But with, everybody being op with everything opening up, we now found that, that cargo has experienced a huge headwind. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've seen lots of importation in Nigeria, but why is that headwind the, the case? disposable income. The challenge is, your, for us, has been the dollar. We purchase, we purchase most of the cargo imports in dollar. So if you're buying at the black market and you're sending money to China to buy your goods, it's already decimated. Mm. So by the time those goods come, and with the rate of inflation, the challenges on fiscal uh, challenges on the economy, how many people can affordability of that good is a huge issue. So we find out that you, that actually affects the number of cargo goods that are actually bought. Now, yes, in all of this mix, there, there's, a, there's what I call sublime optimism. Sublime optimism in the sense that you start finding out that 
we are very resilient, tenacious set of people, whereby, and government has actually, through the Nigerian Export Promotion Council and other uh, agencies, yeah. promoting non-oil exports. Yeah. If you look at those and they numbers, did pretty well this year. Exactly, twenty twenty two. Yes, they did pretty well. Can they do far more better? Of course, I think yes, they should. With policies, with processes, and with uh, the the nice uh, agricultural push to backward integration, we're able to ensure standardization. The ESCTA is also there exactly. that we are yet to take advantage. Exactly, of. we've not even scratched. We've not even started. We're finishing the signing up of the AF, the African Free Trade Zone. Uh, documents. So with that and with all the country, uh, countries lined up for the after, that's going to be a good uh, economic boom, not only for Nigeria, but Africa in, in, a, in a whole, in general. Mm. So you, you think we're ready for that? Well, well before I, before, before I, I, I move on with that, let, let, let's stay with the sector now and um, oh, we're a bit, a bit back home again. Uh, a lot of work being done by the ministry and you hear the minister every day saying, oh, we are working on a roadmap, and it seems like we are we are on track with this roadmap. Uh, any updates with regards to the Nigerian air thing? Uh, it's always good to touch on it anytime we talk. I know the last time the airline operators, I think they, they took the federal government to court. I don't know if it's still in. But what's what's your reaction to that for the growth and development of the sector? Do you think uh, it will really affect the airline operators negatively? Do you think it will? open up for private sector coming in. What are your thoughts? You are a major player in this space. The, that's a multifaceted question. And uh, you always go back to this question. It's very important. It is very important. It. But the truth about it is they've actually, uh, the minister a few days ago said it, the roadmap is on schedule. Yeah. The AON disagree uh, on schedule in terms of the uh, approval, what you call the airline operating or AOC. Uh, certificate is uh, operation certificate is on stage five. The uh, uh, airline operators of Nigeria are at uh, divergent views of that process, and they said it's not uh, the if it's at stage five, then they should have the aircrafts, they should have the team, they should have the demo flights mm -hmm. being done. To the best of my knowledge, at that as at today, I don't see that being done. And where it's a race against time, but he sees I. It's all about perception. He sees what I don't see, but from the industry and the feelers and what we actually we, uh, the awareness program, we've not heard the uh, uh, the update about the Nigerian Air either from the MD of the Nigerian Air or only we've heard from the minister. But it said it would happen in the next uh, in the next three months. We're still waiting. Well, for me, I, I, I've seen what Ethiopia Airlines is doing, and I, I think it's something that uh, could be replicated if possible. They're doing so well in the aviation industry. You agree with me? Yes. Yeah. I don't know, but I think, um, well, maybe there's more to it that meets the eye. I'm just a journalist, and I, what I do is to ask the questions. Oh, well, <laughs> let's talk about ticketing and pricing at the moment. How, how has that been? It seems you, you guys are now used to the hike in the, uh, what's it called, aviation feel, and just... Let's go on with business. What do we do? It's the reality of, I, we talked about cargo. We talked about the market woman. We talked about dollar has been in the range of the 70s yeah. at the power ma yeah. market yeah. since yeah. September. So it's either you sink or you swim. So you've been, if you had to go and shop, and let's bring that to the uh, Jet A1. Jet A1 is, is, is liberalized. So the players have to, source for their dollars, and then go and import the Jet A1, which is aviation foil. So with the importation, it's open to the volatility of the dollar. Yes. And so when they bring it in, co coupled with logistics, coupled with the challenges of uh, moving the, uh, the product around, you now have to, you have to buy it at that price. The, uh, the, we don't, we're not left with much option. So we're ranging about, about within 760, 800 to about 8,000. Most times when there's a, this affects the, the, the a glitch, causes a lot of glitch with the operations of the airlines, domestic airlines. And what, you ha what they've done for communication is update the passengers. Mm. And there's going to be a delay due to scarcity of aviation for 
So it's a reality we're living with. Is it the best? No. Hopefully, the dollar will come down. We're able to get a very functional uh, rate, uh, which is what the, uh, the CBN rates, or a, a, a realistic rate, which would be a realistic market rate, and then we're able to put that, layer that in the cost of the tickets, which was your first question. So with, it would now make the, first, uh, the fair rate very, very competitive. Aviation is supposed to be the catalyst for the economy. We just have aviation at 0.04% as an economic. It should be ranging between 8% to 12% in Nigeria because we have the population. We have the geographical location. We have, if we are not moving thing, people across as, uh, regions, we should actually, our states, we should actually be moving goods. So that's supposed to be the opportunity we're supposed to leverage on to actually boost aviation within Nigeria. Well, finally, let's talk safety. In recent times, and it's a good one, we, we rarely hear of uh, aircraft, you know, uh, all of those stories that we, 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 we normally wouldn't like to hear. It seems the regulators are really up to speed uh, with the happenings in recent times. What is your assessment with the relationship of the regulator with the entire space sector and space? We have ever been safety conscious uh, industry. Safety for us is number one. It's safety, seriously speaking, safety. We don't cut corners. And it is sure because we don't have a second option. Yep. So what we've evolved, apart having the people doing their jobs, which is the NCAA, the FAN, uh, the agencies doing their jobs, what we have is you have the airlines actually self-regulating as well. So you have what you call the IOSA. And with the IOSA, it actually helps you self-regulate and ensures your safety. You have all of, most of the new airlines ensuring that self-regulation. And the other, the other good thing these days is the opportunity of social media. With social media, lots of information goes out so fast. So it actually puts the airlines right on, in the, front, on the front burner. So they're able to actually share information and communicate to different social media platforms to tell people this is not what happened, this yeah. is what happened, and th things, the right things have been put in place to ensure that this, it, it, all the dogs are in a row. So what we've seen as well is NCAA, which is Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, ensures that the inspectors, uh, the maintenance has done as I went to. Wow. So it goes a long way. So don't look out for the negative. Look out, the focus on the positive, and see how aviation, how we can grow aviation with more infrastructure, with more uh, navigational aids, with more uh, enabling the environment, and then more people will be able to grow, and the economy will grow. Well, you know, I always like to wrap up with an outlook. We've almost projected for the sector already, looking at what, what we see on ground. But in its entirety, uh, of course, that's a global outlook now. We must not limit it to, to our economy. W w what are you thinking? At first, we thought this growth would get fully back maybe sometime around 2024 uh, towards second, third quarter. Uh, but now, with all of this, what are you thinking of the outlook? Outlook. The, uh, we actually look at outlooks layering all the forecasts. And World Bank, UN, every all the forecasts, even the Airbus, Boeing forecast. So, all looking at all reviewing all those forecasts, everybody is looking at second half and precisely the last quarter of 2023. All the engines will be on six cylinders running. Why? There's a the pent up demand. People need to travel, people want to travel. You've, another, you can talk about a lot of uh, uh, mental health issues. So people need to be, we're social animals. So people need to travel. There's a boom in, a, uh, in the population. So we have about 9 million people globally. So with that, there's need for visiting family and friends. So, and with the economy and the inflation coming down at the, at the second half of uh, 2023, it would give people the disposable income to travel for vacation, for travel for business, and to actually do other exciting things which aviation provides.
Interesting conversation as usual. Mr. Tayo Juri is a managing partner, Aglo Aviation Support Services Limited. Thank you so much for your time on the show. We really do always appreciate you. It's always my pleasure. All right. Then.